Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and the first major update for macOS Ventura is here, 13.1. In this video, I'm gonna go over all the new features, bug fixes, security updates, enterprise changes, and news for OpenCore Legacy Patcher. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Along with the 13.1 update, Apple released a slew of updates for other operating systems. They also released Monterey 12.6.2 security update, Big Sur 11.7.2 update, Safari 16.2 for Big Sur and Monterey as a separate download, Xcode 14.2, command line tools for Xcode, and Apple Configurator 2 was updated just a couple days ago to 2.1.6. On the iOS side, Apple released 16.2 for iPad and iOS, and they also released 15.7.2 security update, tvOS 16.2, audioOS for HomePod, and watchOS 9.2. Our demonstration Mac here today is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air. As you've heard by now, System Preferences has been redesigned into System Settings in macOS Ventura. So to be able to install your first software update once you get to Ventura, you'll find it right here if your Mac is checked for updates. And you'll see that. If you don't, you can still go to General and then you can click Software Update and it'll bring you to the same place. It's going to immediately check for updates and then find the latest update available, which should be 13.1. And there it is. To find out more information about it, all you need to do is click on more info and then you'll see the update and its size. You can click here to show all of the features and bug fixes available in this update. And all you need to do is click install now. You'll click on the agreement to the licensing agreement. Only standard user is required. So enter in your password here for your account and click on okay. What it's gonna do is gonna download the entire update, prepare it just like it does on your phone or your iPad and then restart to the installer. And we'll be right back after that. Okay, even though the preparing said it would take 25 to 30 minutes, it only took seven minutes to prepare the update. We already got a restarting computer message here and we're gonna see how these brand new faster macOS updates work on Ventura. Click on restart and here we go. Okay, we're back up after the update and that was super fast. It only took five minutes to install the 13.1 update on this M1 MacBook Air. That's faster than we've ever seen before. Now keep in mind, if you have automatic downloads, the preparing time is not even gonna be a part of this. It'll automatically prepare in the background and then just give you a notification up here when the update's ready and it only takes five minutes to install the update. Again, this is a new feature on Ventura and M1 and M2 Macs. It's not included in older Intel Macs. Now that the update's installed, let's take a quick look at the build version of 13.1. It is 22C65, and this is the same version as the RC or release candidate that was released last week. Sometimes they come out with an RC2 or a different build number on public relaunch, but it was the same this time. If you're not on this version, you might be on a beta version. Make sure you remove the beta profile and install the latest update. How large was the 13.1 update on the actual installation of macOS? And we can look at that under the storage tab of system settings. On 13.01, it was 13.16. So let's take a look at that, open up system settings, and we can go into general, and we can go into the storage area, and then it will take a second to load. And you'll also notice that it'll show up down here immediately after it detects that. It'll show macOS, so you don't have to hold the cursor over here. So for the macOS installation, you can see it was 13.24 gigabytes. So it's just a little bit bigger this time around. A couple quick details before we get into the new features. The firmware for M1 and M2 devices was updated and I always keep track of this because Apple did not update it in the 13.01 update. Now the OS loader version is also matched to the firmware version this time and on the T2 Intel Macs the Bridge OS was updated to 2016.2059. Apple also released a full installer of Mac OS 13.1, so you can build a USB installer or install to an external or different volume and an IPSW restore file to restore your M1 or M2 Mac with Apple Configurator 2 in a second Mac. And I always go over this too because Apple also made the Monterey version of 12.6.1 the final ISPW. When the new version of Mac OS comes out, the previous one is stopped being produced. So 12.6.1 is the last version. Now let's take a look at the, some of the new features of the Ventura 13.1 update. First of all, it's Freeform. Freeform is a new app for working creatively with friends, colleagues on a Mac, iPad, or iPhone. It is only compatible with Mac OS Ventura 13.1 or newer, iPad OS 16.2 or newer, iOS 16.2 or newer. It is a flexible canvas that lets you add files, image, stickies, and more. So let's take a look at that. The Freeform app is in your applications folder once you make the update. So all I need to do is go to Applications, and Freeform is right here. So once you open it up, you'll see a 
banner that'll tell you about a couple of new features and you'll see your board's recent shared items and favorites. So all I need to do is start a new board is click on the little paper with the pencil and you can add anything you want to this. You can add shapes, click on it and, and it'll start to create and you can drag them all over the place. You can add text whatever you want to do. And think of it as a whiteboard for you to be able to collaborate with others. And it's a really nice thing if you're trying to do a project or any kind of design work. And we can also see what that looks like on iPad. And we can kind of give a demonstration of the, the sharing capabilities by showing what it looks like when you're signed into your iCloud account on both devices. So open up Freeform, and then once you can see, you already see the files, and we can click on the one that we're already working on here, and then any edit that we do, we'll be able to see happen on the Mac also, see? And this is what other people will see when they're connected to this document and you're doing live collaboration. So it's a really cool application. I think it's gonna work out really well for a lot of people. The next big new feature in 13.1 is advanced data protection for iCloud. This new option expands the total number of iCloud data categories protected by using end-to-end -end encryption to 23, including iCloud backup, notes, and photos. Protecting your information even in the case of a data breach in the cloud, meaning that if someone hacked into the cloud and you have this new advanced data protection enabled, they're not going to be able to get to your data without your keys. Let's take a closer look at this. There's three sections in here, and first of all, I wanted to mention this is a really important piece of what is compatible. Remember, only Mac OS Ventura 13.1 or newer is compatible, iOS 16.2 and iPadOS 16.2. So if you are on any version lower than that, you are not compatible and you cannot enable this new security. Looking at this, there's three different sections here. iMessage, contact key verification, security keys for Apple ID and advanced data protection. Let's first look at the first one, which is the, the contact keys for iMessage. Now with iMessage contact key verification, users who face extraordinary digital threats such as journalists, human rights activists, and members of the government can choose to further verify that they are messaging only with the people they intend. The vast majority of users will never be targeted by these highly sophisticated cyber attacks, but the feature provides an important additional layer of securities for those who might be. Now this is a screenshot of what could happen. You can see here there's a warning at the bottom. An unrecognized device has been added to Jenny's account that, that might be taking the place of Jenny. So that's a really nice security feature. Now the next piece is security keys. Now with security keys, users have the choice to make use of third-party hardware security keys to enhance this protection. The feature is designed for users who often due to their public profile, face considered threats to their online accounts, such as celebrities, journalists, and members of the media. It's the same thing with the iMessage security. For users who opt in, the security keys strengthen Apple's two-factor authentication by requiring hardware security key as one of the two factors. This takes our two-factor authentication even further, preventing even an advanced attacker from obtaining the user's second factor in a phishing scam. Now that's really important because even though we have two-factor authentication enabled nowadays, hackers are now becoming more and more aware of this and they're using social engineering even at work. There's a story that I was reading about where a user was fished his two-factor authentication codes by someone pretending to be IT support from that company. So they reached out and said, hey, I'm IT support with the company. We're having problems with you logging into your account. We need you to enter your codes to make sure they match the ones we have on file. So he sent those codes and he was able to log into that account and take over the account. This would prevent that because you have to have that security key and no one has it except you. And you can see here in the picture what that looks like. You'll need to plug this security key into your phone to identify who you are as that third piece of security. And the third part is, is advanced data protection for iCloud. For users who opt into this new security, advanced data protection keeps most iCloud data protected even in a case of data breach in the cloud like we mentioned. And we can see what that looks like here. iCloud encrypts your data to keep it secure. The advanced data protection protection uses end-to-end -end encryption to ensure that the iCloud data types listed below can be decrypted only by your trusted devices protecting your information even in case. Because Apple will not have these keys required to recover your data, you will be guided to set up an alternative recovery method in case you ever lose access to your account. So these are some of the things that you want to make sure that you have set up before you enable the security. Because again, if something happens and you lose these keys, Apple will not be able to unlock your account because that's the whole point of encrypted data protection on the account. 
Now let's take a look at some of the improvements and bug fixes in 13.1. First of all, it's in messages. There's a new feature in messages that allows you to search for photos based on their content, like a dog, car, or person. So when you search card, for example, it'll search through all your messages and be able to determine if it's a car and show you all those photos and messages. Another new feature in the messages app is shared with you. Content shared in messages can automatically appear in apps such as Photos, Safari, and more. As you can see here, we've got a link to a website in Safari. We've got a link to Mythic Quest Season 2 on Apple TV and a photo shared in photos. So some new features in the Notes app, and let's take a look at that. First of all, you can see that there is a new banner here that shows you more powerful smart folders. In addition to tags, you can now filter by notes and date, attachments and checklists and more. Remember, one less password, end-to-end -end encryption like notes with your login password, and lots more. Edit new actions, shortcut app, notes grouped by date, new tag and filter and more. The next big change is around the Find My app on Mac. Mac. And we've been looking for this for a while now because iOS has been able to use this in the Find My app, but now the Mac can. Play a sound and Find My app can now help you pinpoint the location of nearby AirTags, AirPods Pro second generation case, and the Find My network accessory. So we can take a look at that new banner and we can see the other pieces that are new. Send your location via satellite and using a supported iPhone from places where there are no cellular Wi-Fi networks. Also find my AirPods and their case. You can now locate individual AirPods and their case on the map. That is a really nice feature that a lot of people have been looking at on the Mac. And also refresh and map. Tap locations on the updated map to open up the Maps app. There's two other bug fixes listed here in the patch notes. Fixes an issue that causes some notes not to sync with iCloud after updates are made, and fixes an issue where some may lose keyboard and mouse input in some apps and games. Now there's two major issues that are not listed here in the 13.1 patch notes, and one has to do with Wi-Fi on M1 and M2 Max. This is the UCLA issues board for the IT department, and it says that some members of the UCLA community have reported an issue with campus wireless on the network. They have been able to successfully connect to the wireless networks and it appears as connected to the device, but after a good period of time, applications requiring internet access will lose connectivity. The outage period has been observed to be as three to four minutes and sometimes can be longer. And this was reported all the way back on 9-30-2022 and looks to affect both Monterey and Big Sur. But the good news is, is that one of the last updates here, it reported that that issue is fixed on macOS Ventura 13.1, but there's no issue noted here for Big Sur or Monterey systems on M1 or M2, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. The second note here is, is that an issue was reported on Reddit. A MacBook Air M2 slows down significantly after opening the sound settings. They show here that they check their Wi-Fi with the speed test, and as soon as they open up the sound settings, the speed cuts in half, so that's a really weird issue. Issue. Now I was able to actually reproduce this issue on this 2020 M1 MacBook Air by just opening up the sound pane just like this and then I ran a speed test while this was closed which you can see here I was able to pull down 140 megabits per second and then as soon as I opened this pane up I ran the speed test again and then I immediately got 80 megabits per second. So you can see there's a significant drop off on the download speed as soon as I open it up. Some have theorized that it's because of the, some or with Bluetooth discovery or something is wrong when you open up the sound pane. Now all you need to do to fix that issue is just go to a different pane or close system settings and you'll jump right back up to your previous network speed. Now let's talk about some security fixes. On the Apple security updates page, Apple has updated the 13.1 page here, so we can take a look at all the security vulnerabilities patched. There's 33 overall, and eight of them are just for Safari, because remember, Safari is included in macOS Ventura, and Safari 16.2 was released for Big Sur and Monterey, and that is a separate download and software updates. Yeah. Remember, I mentioned in the last update that Apple does not update macOS Monterey and Big Sur to the level of macOS Ventura. Not all all of the security fixes in Ventura are affecting Monterey and Big Sur, but if there's a major one that takes a considerable overhaul of some of the framework. Those are not fixed in Monterey and Big Sur. And if you want to stay on the latest secure OS, you need to upgrade to Mac OS Ventura. Apple has even said it in their security documents. 
The next thing I wanted to talk about is that Apple killed the plan to scan your photos for the CSAM program. Now remember, this was released to protect children, but the problem was is that security researchers looked at this and they said that this could be a security privacy issue because photos could be misidentified and the system looks at everybody's photos on the device itself. This system is already on iCloud. All your photos that are being uploaded to iCloud are part of that system, but this one don't scan the photos that are on your device, even if you didn't upload them to iCloud. The next thing I wanted to talk about was rapid security response. This has already been released for iOS and iPadOS, but has not been added to macOS Ventura yet. So hopefully we will see this and I'll keep you updated on that. The next section here is what's new in Enterprise for macOS Ventura. And this document is great for anybody that supports or administers Macs in a large environment like system administrators like me. So it's nice to be able to see that Apple's putting these notes in here for people like us who have to handle these Macs for users. And so the first one is, is that supervised Mac computers running macOS Monterey 12.3 or later can upgrade to macOS Ventura 13.1 without the need to run a full installer app or authenticate as an administrator. So two things here. This is the Delta upgrade, smaller and faster upgrade that I was talking about for Mac OS Ventura and the need to not be able to authenticate as an administrator to install a software upgrade to the next major version. This is going to help out a lot of education and enterprise environments upgrade to the next version a lot easier. Now, the next thing we needed to talk about is the fact that this is the first update, 13.1, that will now show up for supervised MDM Max for the Delta upgrade. So make sure that you have your deferrals all set up properly if you wanna still be able to block this. The next piece is that macOS now supports ACME certification, MDM payload, network locations, settings can now be accessed in the system settings. MDM can now specify domains or for cross-site tracking is allowed in Safari, includes improvements for managing and displaying login items in system for settings, includes reliability improvements using DHCP v6, resolves an issue with network intermittently becoming unresponsive in dense Wi-Fi environments. That sounds like just the UCLA issue that we talked about earlier that was fixed and resolves an issue with printers that were removed after a software update and resolves an issue with Rosetta 2 removed after a software update. Now let's take a quick look at some benchmarks. I always use Geekbench 5 to be able to run the test and I always run it before I update and then after, but I do not run the Geekbench score until the Spotlight Index has finished so the system's at the maximum state where it wouldn't slow down at all. I ran this here and you can keep an eye on my user score so you can take a look at that. On 13.01, we had a single core of 1754 and a multi-core of 7806. And then after we updated to 13.1, very close again, single core, 1751 and just a little bit slower on the multi-core 77 and 87 remember we're only looking for large swings in here to see if there's maybe a problem with the update or a problem with the system after installing in the update if it's really close we're looking really good now let's talk about Open Core Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs. For 2012 to 2016, you can install macOS Ventura on your Mac, even though it's not supported by Apple, with Open Core Legacy Patcher. The current version is 0.5.2 as of this taping, but 0.5.3 is in the works and should be out soon. Uh, there is no notice issues so far that have been reported with macOS 13.1 on any of these devices. And you can see this is a 6.1 2013 Mac Pro, running 13.1, no issues whatsoever. Before you upgrade, make sure you're on 0.5.2 because that fixed a previous issue with the KDK downloader. But again, everything's running very well so far. A quick update on the non-metal Max from 2011 and older that is still in active development and it is not ready for those models yet. So stay tuned for more on that. Do I recommend installing the Mac OS Ventura 13.1 update? When I come up with a recommendation, I always look at the features and fixes included in the update along with the security changes. Keep in mind, some smaller updates only fix certain things. Like for example, if it fixes just an Outlook issue. And if you don't use Outlook, then I don't recommend installing it. You don't even need to waste your time. But with this update, it's a major update with 13.1. It includes a lot of security fixes and major updates to the operating system, including to fix like Wi-Fi issues that we talked about earlier. So I do recommend doing this. But before you do, I always recommend backing up your data before you do, whether it's on an external hard drive or a time machine, just to make sure you're safe. So if you're one of 
those very small percentages of people who has an issue with the update, you will have all your data backed up in case you run into problems. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up or a share. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, you can click on this Mr. Macintosh logo here to subscribe to the channel. And you can also follow me for the latest macOS news on Twitter and on Mastodon. And I wanted to thank all of my Patreon members. I truly thank you and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.